Live. Thank you. Welcome, welcome back to Dab Meet. I mean, sorry it's on a weird day. Sorry it's during Saturday football. But suck our dicks about it, dude. Shut up. <laughs> Don't ever complain to me that we're doing this during something else ever again. Dude, this is that time where time doesn't exist. It starts now. Yeah. And it ends through the holidays. Yeah, yeah for real, dude. You're on pre-vacation vacation. Pull up two screens. Stop being a fucking bitch. It's fattening season. Get fucking roasted. Get fucking big and fat and sit on your dad's couch that's, like, impossibly comfier than yours. Go eat cheese. Ignore ignore the family members you don't care about. Fuck it. Actually, don't even watch this now. Pause this, close the window, bring this up, and wa watch this instead of dealing with your family at Christmas. That's what I'm saying. With us today is, I mean, the, the uh, a prototypical uh, funny retard. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, guy, yeah. the guy who's doing yeah, that's, that. I, that's, a, I think, a direct quote from one of my mom's boyfriends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The guy who figured out how to do it the best, and we all want to do it the same way. Oh, and Soder, dude, thanks for being with us. I love you guys so much. <laughs> it's so fun. Man, dog. I was so happy to come when I when I knew I was coming to Philly, and you guys were like come do dad meet. I was like, absolutely. Yeah, we uh, get a lot of like, oh, see what I'm doing that day. And we go, nah. oh, cool, man, thanks. <laughs> nah, man, this is great. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, this is our first time actually seeing each other since the uh, the Skanks prank, and obviously we don't need to recap it. I'm sure I'm sure people have talked about it to death, but holy smokes, man, it was all set up. It was. It was. You're a gamer. I paused Ragnarok, <laughs> and then took my I took my fat bitch of a dog on a walk, and I was just yelling Chappelle in the streets of Hoboken, and then uh, a dude came around the corner, and like he thought he was about to meet the confused the face. <laughs> I think it was when I was talking about Lewis's foot fetish. This guy just came around the corner. I picked up shit during that prank phone call. <laughs> My dog took a good turd. You couldn't tell, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that was all set up, man. As someone that's been prank phone calling his whole life, that was 100. Sometimes you need, if you have a good setup, you can like really run with it. And I was like, oh, this is all done. It was just, you got you guys came up with it. I rewatched the episode and I was like, damn. Now, see, Butterly and Rainy fuck. That's a long knife to be gesturing with. Dude. I have to tell you this. Yeah, that is, that is true. Speaking of. <laughs> dude, Tim, you're, you've been involved in two of the highest level pranks that I've known about. I know, but we can't talk about it too much. Or, Why? Are you going to get in trouble? Oh, no, man. eyes are going to be on me and the pranks are going to start to kind of uh, fall apart on me. Yeah. You might have to start wearing a disguise. No, I'm, I need to be in the shadow. Dude, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I was just there for it. it You're was the man cool. behind the man. I was actually going to make fun of people saying, like, Butterly fucking set this up. It's like, no, dude. No, but you did. Yeah, make like fun a, of me, motherfucker. Yeah. There, was like a direct, <laughs> there was like a direct sentence where you just said, Oh, you should call her as Dave Chappelle. Yeah, but I think that was just obvious, and eventually yeah. someone got there. However, what I was going to say then was- I had the action yeah. hero set up where they're like, I was on my farm <laughs> working on a yeah. fence, and you guys landed in a Apache helicopter, and you're like, we you need you. A bitch. And I go, I don't do Chappelle anymore. I told you I'm out. <laughs> yeah. I told you I don't do that black son of a bitch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but we you don't need understand. You. <laughs> you don't understand. It's a dumb bitch. I go. Fine, uh, I'll do it. A dumb blonde bitch. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great, dude. It Chopper was, pulls up. Yeah. CCR starts playing. Yeah. <laughs> but I was gonna say. So uh, I found out playing Warzone this week. They have like. Like the voice changer for Morgan Freeman now. Like you could just call. Ah, uh, that's it, not fun. And it sounds. Like, but the thing is, you still have to say something funny. Mm -hmm. And that I mean, so regardless, if someone picks up the voice changer and suddenly they sound like Chappelle, yeah, they're not gonna get it done. That's why Kyle Dunnigan's so funny because Kyle Dunnigan says hilarious shit when he does impressions. Well, that's what I'm saying about you. Oh, that's, yeah. that's why it was what it was, dude. It was um, very fun. So yeah, you're the best, and thanks for being here. And prank phone calling. <laughs> I feel. I hope little kids are still doing it. Well, I don't know that they are, man. Uh, I, is it a, is it a dead art? I, I think it's a dying art, but that may be like the kind of thing where you know maybe have to be introduced to like the Big Brother Big Sisters program. Ex I was exactly. Gonna I say would love to be a Big Brother and prank phone call. Little <laughs> yeah, kids. it would be perfect for that. <laughs> Take in wayward little retards and be like, let's make calls. <laughs> And they're like, this kid, this, I, I want to be a sensei. I want to be a prank <laughs> That's phone what we call need. sensei. We need dedicated older brothers to teach the art yeah. of prank calls. Because my kids tried it, and it was just like dog shit. Dog shit. Like, they would call you, they would call me, and they would already be giggling. And, ah. they, would, and they would try to order a pizza from me, and I'd be like, nothing about this is right, dude. Dude, uh, have they ever listened to Jerky Boys? I, I mean, that is, I guess not. That's the old, that's, that's the Bible yeah, of prank phone calls. Start off with that and, uh. Yeah, get him into fr some Frank Rizzo, mm -hmm. work him into Tarbosh, the Egyptian Ooh. magician. <laughs> but a big it, Saul Rosenberg guy. Oh, my God. When I worked at a radio station in Tucson, we would get, um, 
like request calls, mm -hmm. right? And it was like a active rock, like alternative station. Mm -hmm. And I found out with the phones, you could answer and then turn my mic off and I could link the calls. So these guys, these like Tucson meth heads would call in and be like, <laughs> one guy, I would just answer both the calls and one guy would be like, hey, hey. And he'd be like, play System of a Down. And he's like, what? <laughs> Boy Metallica, <laughs> and we would just sit in the studio and listen to these idiots fucking yell at each other. Damn. It was so fun. Poor retarded children need your mentorship. I would love ever. to be a prank phone call sensei because it was as an only child uh, with a mom that worked too much. I was around when Star Six Seven dropped, and it changed the game. It was like, oh, now I can move in. Now I can move in the shadows. Mm -hmm. Dude. <laughs> I can move completely. My my prank phone calling game got so insane. They handed you the smoke bomb. Yeah, they were like, "Use this for good," and I said, "I'll use this for what I damn well please." Um, I would call hotels, and then in my best, I was like maybe eleven, mm -hmm. but in my best, like Def Jam white guy voice, I would be like, "Is there a uh, is there a Mister uh, Anderson there, or just like a name yeah. or whatever? Like, is there a Mister Jones, like something?" There? And then sometimes one of these idiots at a double tree would be like. Like, we have, like, a Sam Jones. You go, yeah, that's actually him. <laughs> and then I'd be like, can you put me through to his room? And it would be, like, 1130 midnight at one time. <laughs> and my friends would be on, you know, like, the kitchen phone. I'd be in the phone in the living room. And one time we had it worked out perfectly where this guy just picked up and he was like, hello? And I was like, Mr. Jones? And he was like, yes? And I was like, I have your wallet. <laughs> and he was like, What? And you could tell the guy was asleep, and we fucking got this guy <laughs> to get out of bed. <laughs> doing an accent that wasn't even really, like, a, a good accent. It was just... It sounded like a short round. Dude, it was. <laughs> Mr. Jones! Dr. Jones! Hey, Dr. Jones! Dr. Jones! Get out of here, lady! <laughs> it was fucking perfect. And the guy got up and was like, what do you mean? We could hear the dude, and then... <laughs> Yeah, I, I forgot how it ended. It probably ended with one of my friends laughing and then breaking all of us. But it, yeah, it ended with your fattest friend going like, "Actually, oh, you're gay. Oh, 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 oh you suck dick when you wake up." Goes, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I'm on the wall. Yeah, dude, it, I would love to mentor kids. I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna this, open Dan's this prank be, phone, oh, phone man. call dojo. Is the police athletic league still a thing? Oh, I don't know. I think we should sit around and plan it like a heist with like a table. Me, uh, like that's what we'll do. I'll come down to Philly. Soder's 11-year-olds. Yeah. Just me and my Soder crew. Kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, I love it. Dan's kids. Oh, <laughs> it's just me and like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame because that's what Sandusky's second mile could have been. Yeah. Instead, he just had to go and fuck them. Dude, the sound, the Sandusky thing, the most fucked up part is that in one of the descriptions... They said that someone just heard the sound. Like, they, like, like the cheeks clapping? Yeah. Oh, like, no. Boy. Like, yeah, there's like one report where they're like, yeah. I just walked by and I heard the cheeks clapping. And how does that, that's got to fuck you up, dude. You can't fuck after that. That's like, the opposite of hearing Chappelle's voice around the corner. Yeah. You're like, it, you're you're like, like no. Not, no. Someone better have been hanging up a picture. Yeah. That's, dude, that, that's the worst part about that. It's like, as soon as you verbalize that publicly, Everybody knows that that's what you're thinking about when you're staring off into space. Like mm -hmm. Anytime like you're in the den, yeah. your wife's like, honey, do you want a piece of lemon cake? And she sees the look I, in your eyes. I like, would be hearing it up until clapping. the gunshot. Yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't go to an event where applause was a thing. Because it would just sound oh, like a million. save those kids. It just sounds like mi millions of kids are being boofed right there. As a, Stop clapping for them. <sighs> oh, no, the finger snaps are even worse. Oh, Stop, oh, please. Oh, oh no. I think that's... Those are little penises being slapped against tongues. I can't do that. No. Uh, do you think Sandowski ever did that? You ever yeah. think he ever did oh, dick smack on his oh, own face? Oh, oh God. Uh, do you ever think he was nasty with him? Do you ever think he comes to like a, an offensive coach or whatever? I don't know. Oh, my God. The kid was like, nah, there was one time he got nasty with me. That was the worst part. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You no, they definitely weren't doing that. Please, no. Oh, but, then you, yeah. and then, but then you know those those kids could hit on the field like that ha that is like spartan training yeah that is legitimately trying to earn gentle sexual assault <laughs> yeah. after the game because like that's people don't realize that like 300 and all that shit people love spartans but they straight up used to butt fuck kids yeah, yeah. Like, yeah it's the molester that's how you made new spartans yeah you were like i'm gonna fuck you into being a warrior and so that's sorry you make new prank callers <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> do you want to be the best 
Yeah. I guess so, mister. Yeah. Boy, <laughs> suck my dick. And Kill your crippled brother and <laughs> blow me. Blow me, and then you're a... <laughs> Throw this retarded child off of a mountain and then spread your yeah. cheeks. Damn, dude, the Spartans really did have a tight circle. <laughs> you really, I mean, they're, they're getting in tight circles, too. So fucking... <laughs> But they were, that's a wild fucking. Do you think the kids ever, uh, like, grouped up all their asses like a phalanx? Yeah. <laughs> that's how they learned it. They learned how to protect the weaker ass by getting in the phalanx. That's a Trojan's child. <laughs> Advance on the triangle. <laughs> they couldn't. And it was just kid cheeks, and the kids with the biggest dicks would put them through, like, spears. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to approach this. Dude, it, the, the people that went up against the Spartans, you had to just be like, There's, we got no chance. They fucked their own kids, dude. Yeah, and then you look back at your own kids, you're just like... No. They're just making <laughs> horses out of with sticks. <laughs> Father, come back from battle! And you're, you're like, too fucking uh, soft. Dude, if I would have fucked you, we would have a shot at it. <laughs> just, <laughs> I do this with my own kids where I go, you know, other kids are getting hit, and I'm not doing that to you guys, That's... so I would appreciate if you met me halfway. Brilliant. If I was like, yeah, you know, some of the other kids are getting fucked. That is brilliant. Please pick up some boxing gloves or something. You know there's a kid within a five-mile <laughs> radius right now taking a hard hook to the chops. <laughs> My mom would do that all the time. My mom would yeah. always like, be comparative. Oh, She'd be you like, have to. With yeah. you getting beat? Yeah. Just yeah. being like, I used to get the shit kicked out of me. You're like, all right. Yeah. Uh, you know what's really funny is how I tell my kids my mom was a drug addict who really mistreated me, and they're like, I know. I'm like, Shut <laughs> the fuck up, dude. This is the worst thing ever. <laughs> do you ever think oh, about just over? waking up and just beating their asses one day just for the fun? Well, that's the, I was, the alternative is actually one time cracking them and being like, you can get that all the time if you yeah. want. Yeah, you see that strength? Yeah. <laughs> you felt that was 5%. Yeah. You thought it was fun when I used to yeah. throw you in the air. Yeah. Imagine I turned that against you. You know, it feels like a grenade just went off and you're kind of like, boom, everything's slow motion. You 5%, fl- dude. You, you want to get flashbanged? <laughs> you're just popping their fucking eardrums. Just... <laughs> Dan, do you have any beatings that you remember? That, it's like, yeah. that was a good one. Yeah. Like, New Year's, no, that was good. Ex- New Year's Eve, uh, 1996. It was like my eighth grade year, and I was mm-hmm. like a shitty kid in this, one of my shitty friends her pair like parents were gone so everyone was gonna go drink at her house Mm -hmm. and i was failing eighth grade and my mom was like you need to get this paper done Mm -hmm. or you're you're gonna repeat eighth grade you had a deadline yeah and i was like (laughs) whatever and uh i wrote i like showed it to her and she like Mm -hmm. was proofreading it she's like this is terrible oh no and i was like fuck you and she was like what's up and i was like i don't give a fuck (laughs) fuck you and she i was in this I was in a swiveling desk chair. And she Giles' was like, music started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, what? And I said it, and she snapped a jab in my fucking nose that I, I swear to God, I wouldn't have been surprised if she made that noise <laughs> when she fired that shit off. Because it fucking, I was like, boom. And then it was just a two-piece and a biscuit. <laughs> Two piece, I mean, just started throwing Tyson hooks. <laughs> Oh my god, and, that is a 10-9 round for Mrs. Soder. Dude, ten, it was 10-7. Because I was I wasn't advancing. I wasn't yeah. I was just not taking the fight to her. I remember it was so bad that she like fucking hit me and then she was like, ah yeah. I lost my temper. Mm. All right, just get out of here. And then I went to the party. Oh but then god. I was like quiet the whole night. Everyone was like, you all right? I was like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, good beating will smack some reflection into I you. really didn't. I didn't even hurt, like, I'm just upset. Yeah, I couldn't be like <laughs> My mommy beat the shit out of me. You can't bring that up to a bunch of bad kids in eighth grade. Yeah. Mom, a... Mommy hurt me. Dad, yeah, maybe you can bring it up. Yeah, that's pretty cool because then it's just like, yeah, well, I held my own. Yeah, you get a, you can. Me and my dad went toe to toe. Yeah, you get a sympathy <laughs> fingering from a girl, but you can't tell her mommy beat you up. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, it has to be real dad. You can't do stepdad. You can't do mom. Also, your stepdad's probably going to break your arm. That's like the main thing. That oh, yeah. I never got touched by a stepdad. Did you? Yeah, that's you know? lucky. Did you? No, my parents were, I never got to experience a stepdad. What about you, Rainey? No, I, my parents are still together. And okay. We got hit mostly by my dad up until like maybe like the age of eight. And then I got hit once after that for breaking like this crystal candelabra <sighs> on the table, dude. And uh, Waterford? Probably not. We were white trash, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was definitely Waterford, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if this is Waterford original, all right. <laughs> finger Hut. <laughs> this is a Finger Hut original. Yeah, everything in our house was Finger Hut. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the w- one good one I remember was uh, we were at, like, a like a Boscov's or something, mm-hmm. and I wasn't allowed to just go, like, walk off into— it was probably attached to a mall. I had to, like, stay in lockstep with my fucking drug addict mom who was just shopping for trinkets with money we didn't have. 
And I was just like getting fidgety. I think I think it was in like eighth or ninth grade. And I was just like, damn, like silently being like, this fucking sucks. And she was just annoyed with me the whole time. And at one point, she was wearing a ring with like a stone on it. And she turned it around and just went, wow, right in my forehead. And I was just like, oh. All right. <laughs> Did you say anything? I was like, that wasn't that bad. But now I have a bleeding wound in my face at the store. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> this look like- fucking sucks. <laughs> Did she yeah. get? Was it like from you saying something? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think it was were just, you just like this sucks. I wasn't even like being shitty. I like I was afraid of making her mad, so I was probably like treading lightly, and it was just like Dude, <laughs> RKO out of nowhere. I was like, what the yeah, I, and then looking back, I wish I would have suplexed her and broken her spine. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, I used to fantasize. I probably looked like a gigantic fuck. I was like six two, and a, a, a five foot two woman struck me in the face and made me bleed. And I was just like, "Yeah, okay. but <laughs> everyone knows that power dynamic. If True. you see that, you're like, all right, cool. Yeah. Because then if you would have hauled off and attacked her like that bear in that internet clip where the guy in the karate, he has to sort of chop him. <laughs> everyone wants to maul their mom like that when she fucking grab her arm and pull her and let her feel the power. And she's like, oh fuck, oh fuck, this thing's got me. Dude, both of her older kids are bigger than mary joe now and it is funny watching her hit the limit where i'm just like well what'd you say to what'd you say to her when she said that and she was like well, i told her to clean up your room i was like and she didn't do it no I was like, well like force her to she's like how how <laughs> <laughs> i've reached my physical limit <laughs> you gotta give her krav maga <laughs> well we I, so we gave lucy her yellow belt at jiu-jitsu today which oh, is no. kind of a big deal in yeah. a child's life and uh at the end like in jiu-jitsu when you get a new belt everyone kind of like at one after another spars with you and you're supposed to be beaten up and tired and it's just a nice thing mm-hmm. and my, my mary joe had to go with lucy and Mary Jo looked at me. She was like, "I don't know if I'm ready for this. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I can beat the shit out of our daughter right now." Yeah. And I'm standing on the sidelines, just like Shao Kahn, just like, "Yes, yes, her. warrior princess, perfect." But that's got to make you feel more powerful, though, that you're the one that has to be looked to now to handle all physical. No, I, I hate that. Obviously, one time I smacked one of their butts, like almost uh, like a yeah. get it in gear, mm-hmm. and both of their legs came out from under them. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have been Bender. And then you look at your hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're like, oh, <laughs> "Fucking power." <laughs> You got Look the Sandusky glove now. <laughs> Dude, I, I, could it it now. I could fuck them up. I watched that Teddy Hart documentary on Peacock, Mm-mm. and um, you should watch it. Dangerous Breed, because he's fucking nuts. But he would abuse women with wrestling moves, and I think that could work on children Dude, as well. that's what chiropractic medicine is. It's just doing wrestling <laughs> moves on people in yeah. scrubs. But just, you know, throw your kid in like a fucking figure four if they're not cleaning their room, and then just really fucking turn it on it. And dude. they're reaching for the ropes. Yeah, you're like, no, there rope no breaks, ropes, there's no ref coming. Back Damn. All, back alley brawl. <laughs> the only time that I've ever bullied someone, my mom used to babysit this kid who was like two years younger, and I was a big Ricky the Dragon Steamboat fan. Yeah. And we went to House of Bargains one day, and I got this karate pajama set that I wore, and when my mom was babysitting this kid, I was like lay at the bottom of the stairs, and I jumped off of like the fucking sixth stair a <laughs> hundred times onto this kid. How big was he? Um, Not much, not much smaller. So you guys were the same size? Roughly the same size. We were in a couple of years, but dude. What the hell? <laughs> And the kid just took it? He took it, but the way that he got me back then was I used to collect the uh, the rubber wrestling figurines. Yeah, LG, LG LGN. Brother, he methodically chewed the paint off of all of my wrestlers. <laughs> like, I would go out there to play with them every Sunday because my mom would watch him on Saturdays and be like... Right. And, and I didn't have a trampoline. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> like Iron Sheik definitely has a little less paint than he had the day before. It just like he'd like nibble on the boot? He was, yeah. It was like fucking Andy that's, Dufresne that's Shawshank psych- taking a little bit out of the wall each day. Yeah, that's psychological warfare on you. He's like, jump on me all you want. Yeah. Probably also poisoning his brain somehow. <laughs> yeah, that dude is definitely on <laughs> Suboxone right now. That, that guy, guy <laughs> 100% is like, I, I, get, I got fucked up off wrestler paint. Yeah. That's the slowest gas pumper on the turnpike. Right yeah. now, yeah. Right, you tested negative for opioids, but you did test positive yeah. for wrestler paint. Dude, you have you have a crazy amount of lead in your blood. <laughs> what did you do? And he's like, I munched wrestlers. I filled up on <laughs> Ultimate Warrior. Before I yeah, got yeah. and that's got to be mad when you're a kid. There's nothing worse than uh, someone outside of your family fucking with your toys because yeah. you're like, who the fuck yeah. put hands on my? So him just munching it is weird as shit. Mm. It's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> the sound he was probably making, it probably had like a squeak. His teeth were probably squeaking <laughs> off of the rubber. 
<laughs> She's like, what are you doing over there? He's like, no. <laughs> no, no, no just, just snacking on Mr. I'm Fuji. In, <laughs> I'm internally <laughs> bleeding and destroying the Rock and Roll Express. I will never have a normal bowel movement because I just be eating off so much fucking pain. And a 200-pound 12-year-old <laughs> stomp on my ribs. <laughs> yeah, you just fucking dropping it from the sixth stair, dude. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that paint went directly into his bowel. <laughs> oh, dude, that's fucking great. And that kid was like, I don't want to get babysat by her anymore. <laughs> like, why? He's like, because I'm taking fucking frog splashes. Yeah. Are you getting molested? No, I'm getting fat wrestled. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Being wrestled when you don't want to be wrestled and oh. you have to be babysat. I have yeah. fat child. <laughs> Tits hanging out of a fucking kimono. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You're just in a pajama set, just splashing on him. <laughs> that is like Sandusky foreplay. <laughs> Like that would be that'd be like the calamari. Yeah, that's definitely how he starts. He goes, that? Oh, look at him smashing into each other. Yeah, I'm actually Sandusky's opener. <laughs> <laughs> what was that position in wrestling where the one gets on all fours and the other guy grabs like the elbow and the waist? That's oh, probably yeah. how it started. Yeah, you're like set up and go. Oh, go. Sandusky? Yeah. He definitely <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Is he still alive? He is. Dude, I have it on good authority that he <laughs> still communicates to people within the Penn State football program to give feedback. He's still calling plays. <laughs> I, him, it's not that far off. <laughs> really? Dude, if you're a linebacker and they're like, hey, listen, Coach Sandusky says you're not hitting the hook to curl fast enough. You go, <laughs> talking to Sandusky? He's looking around. He's like, what is there? It's, what the fuck? You know that you... chess master that cheated by having a, a remote control butt plug inserted? I he's kind probably of, got. He's I kind probably, of heard about little that. Little tiny butt plugs that he <laughs> his, All of his offensive coordinators, everybody's got a, like a remote control butt plug and he's just calling plays from prison. There's just a room in the prison <laughs> where they just shuffle him into it's and the like, let him go. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's getting jiggled in He's their ass. Oh, 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 the Penn State Nittany Lions have shut them down again. Something's gotten into this defense. I don't know what it is. He's like, it's me. It's always been me. Dude, the coach is getting carried off the field, and the players are like, are your fucking underwear vibrating yeah. right now? What's jiggling right now? It's hard to hear anything in the huddle over the buzz. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking wild. I would think he would get fucked up in prison because he's a pedophile. Dude, I think football yeah. knowledge just, trumps anything. Got yeah, love a winner, dude, man. Football's so cool. <laughs> football's so cool that it makes you it makes you forgive murderers and pedophiles. No, dude, it's a you're jail like, FOP card. Yeah, it really is, dude. If you could fucking call plays, I gotta let McDaniel know that. I get like you gotta start doing some crazy shit. Yeah, have you thought about using Sandusky as a consultant? <laughs> yeah, dude. See what he's doing in prison. Dude, you get to do that movie meeting where he's on the other side of the fucking glass. Oh he's yeah. Like, the what do you want? <laughs> I want to stop Notre Dame. <laughs> I can help you. Yeah. You sneak him in a dry erase marker for the plexiglass. <laughs> just Draw this him. up. And here's a few baby carrots for your time. Yeah. And here's a soiled child's underwear. I've, I've hidden it in a cake. Here's some piston He-Man underpants. <laughs> he just pulls it out of the cake. He's, he's, ooh, these are good. No, 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 no. It's mail call Sandusky. <laughs> Yellow stained envelope. Yeah. Ooh, fresh batch. <laughs> how do you think he improvises in jail? You know how like regular inmates will make uh, fifis. Yeah. Do you think he's got like a modified? Fifi? He prob Well, you know what he probably does first is he's adopted a child's diet, so only he only eats like chips and fruitopia. Yeah. And then he soils oh, things man. himself. Oh, he goes. It's it's so close. <laughs> There's one ingredient missing. <laughs> What do I need? Dude, that's so funny. Sandusky, here's your weird diet. <laughs> he goes, oh, look, it's Dunkaroos. <laughs> Dunkaroos and Capri Suns <laughs> again, huh? Goes, mm. <laughs> then he jerks off with the underwear. because He's like, there's shit on my cock. <laughs> Smells a little bit like it used to. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's got to be fucking that's hilarious. He adopts their diet. Yeah, what if he's, like, working in the kitchen and he's just, like, smacking little hamburgers yeah, like all goes, fucking morning long? He's like, Sandusky, you going to put those in the oven? Or he hears it and he gets excited and he comes around the corner and he goes, sorry, I thought you were fucking a kid in the shower. He just comes floating through the commissary yeah, like yeah, Yogi yeah. Bear. <laughs> Two adult men. Yeah. Oh, you're just getting bologna ready for sandwiches? I thought you were fucking a boy in the shower. <laughs> it's so Heaven. funny. He's whiffing through the air. Heavens I, to Murgatroyd. That's eight-year-old cheeks. <laughs> I, th I thought you were saying he's walking into the shower on an actual rape and he gets really hopeful and he goes in and it's just two Latino guys. He's like, ah, oh, 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 you're jumping them in Gross. the Aryan nation. <laughs> this is going to be boy love. <laughs> 
Dude, that's got to be wild. And especially if you meet Sandusky in prison. Oh, my God. If you're like, wait, you're Jerry Sandusky. And then he's probably pretty nice to you. And you're like, uh, look, when I met him, he was kind of an okay guy. Dude, he he kind of coached me through it. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever heard him talk? He does have a childlike whimsy about him. Really? What do you mean? I thought he was like a no-nonsense, get it all on the gridiron. The exact opposite. Dude, he's very awkward, and and he's always like fidgeting and looking from side to side as he speaks, constantly nervous, smiling. Mm. Didn't he molest his son? Seems like it. Aren't they saying that? Yeah. That's got to be crazy. That's like having a wrestling buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want. You're like, hey, all right. Also, it's like the last soda in the refrigerator. <laughs> where you're like, I guess I'll fuck my own kid. Usually I like to fuck other kids, but if, if this is the last I one. I was saving it. this. <laughs> <laughs> Get over here. Let me fucking ruin your life. Tyler, face down, beanbag now. <laughs> yeah, time to plow. <laughs> Oh, they said they need a Sandusky episode of Little Stinkers. Oh, oh I would love to do go. that, yeah. I'll fucking come down for that. Oh, dude, I would love that. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Let's book it, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm fascinated by it. Yeah, my, my friend who gave me that intel. Um... It'd be great if you only covered his football career. <laughs> <laughs> dude, honestly, I think yeah. that's, I wish you wouldn't have said that, because that would have been the most brilliant shit. Sorry, you do a dude, whole episode, I, and man, you're like, I can't turn and, it off. And, and, and you go. And they won. They were nine and three that season. They won the Orange Bowl. And they, wonder- <laughs> <laughs> Orange Bowl Fiesta Bowl, Fiesta Bowl champs that year. You think you could get a phone call with them from prison? Yes, I'm gonna look into it. You think you could get like a child's voice changer? <laughs> I'm gonna try to learn how to do Joe Paterno, uh. and, then we, and then you could channel Joe Paterno. <laughs> <laughs> no Jerry, Joe, like. yeah. you fucked all those kids in the show. <laughs> Come to Penn State. You remember that commercial? No. The, the, the Big Ten had this commercial where they'd show all the coaches, <laughs> and they'd be like, you need to be a Michigan State Spartan or whatever. And then at the very end, it's just old Joe Paterno, and he just goes, Come to Penn State. <laughs> it was fucking wild. It was right before, you know, the collapse. Uh, it was very uh, funny. That's a great recruitment tool for molestable children. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Come to Penn State. Your kids get fucked. Because <laughs> it was for a camp. I think it was like for a camp for like wayward kids. That yeah, was Sandusky. Second, second mile. mile. Yeah. Second, that's what it was yeah. called? Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. Dude, we need to start the third mile for prank calls. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, <laughs> dude, he was, um, there seems to be a connection between he and, um, do you know that guy, Greg Bucciaroni? He's a, uh, you see him a lot talking about Uncle Eddie Savitz and Sandusky. He was a. This, this it, is more your circle than me, brother. He you want to talk about Rocket League professional drama? I'm your guy. This is you, brother. He was a child gigolo, and he child says, gigolo, <laughs> and everybody knows. Yeah, he's putting on a candy necklace, <laughs> checking his hair in the mirror. He's like, "Ooh, you look molestable." <laughs> Good morning to you, Mr. Molestable. Dude, Dude, a molestable sounds like a molested kid's uncrustable. Yeah, they just come with no pants. It's just a little boy in a shirt. (laughs) They can just suck their dicks right here. Spunkaroos. They can just fuck this kid right off the shelf. But this this kid, Greg Bucciaroni, was a child gigolo. (laughs) And he was out of Uncle Eddie Savitz's camp. And he says that Uncle Eddie Savage <laughs> and Jerry Sandusky. Out of Eddie Savage's camp. <laughs> Shut <laughs> it off, dude. Listen. <laughs> dude, it, it is like the Warriors of Molested Kids. Station Combine. <laughs> yeah, dude. They go, dude, this, kid, this, four, four. this kid's ability to not tell is off the charts. We've never seen his secret keeping ability. That's the 40 speed. This kid's got like six six secrets, no yeah. tell. How, how quickly can you suck off a 40 year old man? <laughs> Look, the kid's dog shit, but his mom's okay with it. <laughs> his mom has got zero skin in the game. This kid could disappear and it would be all right. All right, terrible vertical, but he's got the stinkiest socks I've ever smelled. Oh, I'm going to suck on his feet and just nut. There's a bunch of guys with clipboards as a kid in dirty socks with like flies around and we're just like, oh my God. Oh my God. Green God, this, this kid's got to be coming out of a top little children program or something. The bottom. He's yeah. coming out. Dude, he's, he's like a fucking five chip recruit. <laughs> oh man, that's got to be just as deflating when they get a kid that doesn't pan out of the, out of the child molester combine oh, than it does when you get like a, a Tony Mandarich in the actual combine. A kid that says "ow." <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we needed a champion. We didn't need a kid with a gag reflex that winces. <laughs> 
<laughs> he goes, I'll tell you what we do with these kids that don't work out of the combine. Let's just say milk carton it is. <laughs> They're going to find a little skull in Bucks County in about six years. Second string, kid. Huh? Yeah. That string goes around your neck. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're cut. <laughs> Damn, dude. Wait, so the, there, that was like a super group of Sandusky and... Yeah. It was a cross state rival. That was all yeah. Madden. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like Night Ranger. <laughs> they like got together and they're like, dude, we are two of the best pedophiles teaming up. Oh, Do you think they did the predator shake when they saw each other? Sandusky. <laughs> yeah, son, of a, son of a bitch. <laughs> you son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, man! What were we actually talking about? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Sandusky is just fascinating. Oh yeah, Greg Gerbochino. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Greg Bucciaroni. Oh, Bucciaroni, the, the one that spoke the ch- out against both of them. He did. Uh, uh, Fucking snitch. Classic hoagie mouth Philly accent, but he's given multiple interviews talking about his time around Sandusky. But more than anything else, he spent time with Uncle Eddie Savitz. Yeah, the uh, pizza box. You familiar? Who, uh, Jay, okay. Big Jay has Dude. filled me in throughout the years. He was the guy that you would like take. He would take pictures, or what would he do? You would shit in a pizza box for him. <laughs> Among other things. I'm I sure. didn't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know about that one. Yeah, I got a delivery for uh, Jerry <laughs> Sandusky. It's a hot one. <laughs> so it's God stuff so, crust. <laughs> so you would go and shit in a box and he'd give you money? Dude, he lived right near Helium. And uh, you would walk up and the line would be out the door of just... Usually between I think twelve and sixteen year old kids that were going, trying Toward, to get like, their the back of the line points. where they like pee pee dancing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Hurry! <laughs> I, need, I need this fifteen dollars pretty bad. <laughs> and it would they would be waiting to sh- just shit or you could shit you could you could shitting in a pizza box was the most common or you could piss on him or you could also just sell your underwear or socks. That's like if you need to pop in and pop out and you just have like a, yeah. a Target bag of your underwear, <laughs> yeah. and you go, I ruffle through it real quick. Five bucks? Get out of here. <laughs> Pissing on him had to have been. I'm trying to think of what do you think was the hardest one? To shit? I'm, it, I'm releasing that piss was probably hardest. Yeah, dude, I get, I get pee shy. Yeah. And if a man was like, <laughs> oh, God, I'd be no. like, <laughs> I can't. I'd be like pushing, like pushing yeah, my belly out, like, uh. and, then I'd, and then I'd be having like frustrated child voice. Where I go, I can't. I'm trying. And he goes, honestly, that drives me wild. <laughs> Mister, do you mind turning yeah. the water on? Uh, can you turn it? Yeah, run the. Would you like me to run the faucet, <laughs> please? <laughs> Just him being like, okay. <laughs> Getting frustrated when you get peed on. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to do this. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Buddy. Okay. Come on. Come on. You know what to do. Right here. You know what to do. Make a count. Just, just go. Just give me a just little. Just go. All right. Do you want to do it in a cup and I'll fucking, Are you... <laughs> I'll zhuzh myself? Oh, uh, David Bird in the live chat uh, offered up a remake of the classic Penn State story, Brian's song, and he's calling this one Brian's Dong. I love it. Mm. Yeah. I love it. You know a good trick for getting a kid to piss in your mouth is put a Fruit Loop on your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Give him something to aim at. <laughs> Danny says I'm full of shit. That with booze, it wouldn't be bad at all. <clears throat> I think you got a point. If, but we're talking about children. Unless you're a 12-year-old that's just fucking <laughs> sucking down a half a pint of vodka. You do whatever you got to do to get through the day. He's like, <laughs> seventh grade's tough. And then I got to go by this man's house and piss in his mouth. Man, there's got there's got to be something given out for high level molester charges because you know how like, you know, mobsters get caught up on Rico charges. Yeah, is there makes the time even more like high level child molestation should carry that same kind of weight where it's like, all right, that was awful, but that was impressive. Yeah, we've got you on fucking. What would be the Rico of molestation? Nino. Yeah, (laughs) you got the Nino. We you got all the little kids, dude. I don't know if they. Is it like less if you don't fuck them? Like how do mol- how do molestation charges work? Is it like if you touch a kid, you're a sec- like, is it you're in, you're in? <sighs> uh, well, or are they like, is it like, is there like a misdemeanor? There's got to be somebody that knows molester law watching right now. Yeah. You guys could let us know. Statistically, there's probably a huge number of them. But I, I would imagine butt fucking carries the worst. Um, Butt fucking's got to be like murder first degree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. Dude. Yeah, sucking them off is like manslaughter. Yeah, because you're like you made them pop. <laughs> <laughs> so that's manslaughter. And then like exposing yourself at a playground, that's like uh, it's like assault. It's beating ticket. Or sucking yeah. them in his power wheels is vehicular manslaughter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's got to be levels to this shit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, the best lawyers are probably like, I know he only sucked my client, but. 
it was pretty bad. Dude, this is, uh, you know, he's aiming for a butt fucking job. There's lawyers for like really rich families that prepare cases where they're like, this guy definitely fucked some kids and I'm going to get them all. I'm going to get them out. <laughs> you know, he's like, I was the best at Yale Law. <laughs> now I just have fucking billionaires' kids <laughs> fucking, you know? Yeah. Because if you're really good at law, oh my like God. if you're the best That's at the law, most money you can make at law. You, that you go to, you Either, gotta go to dark. You're the guy places. that like stamps the paperwork at Google, like at the top, or yeah. you're the guy that's just like, oh, you think he fucked kids? Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did prove it. Guess what? Technically, still not in trouble. That is, <laughs> if you're like the best lawyer, you're like you're getting murderers and and pedophiles. Yeah. Free. You, you got your client trying to put on underoos in the courtroom like OJ's glove. Like, yeah, see, I don't know. Look at that. Look at that. And the kid said he was wearing objection, growth spurt. <laughs> yeah. Look, they don't fit in his mouth. He's trying as hard as he can. And then you light a cigar after, and you're like, yeah, I did it again. <laughs> if yeah. the underwear is full of shit, you must acquit. Yeah. And you, if you're just a shark, you're like, I'll go into the deepest waters. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude, these knives rule. Yeah. yeah, we make it a point to always have one with us. Just Our boy in case. Jacob Amon made these from hand, yeah. by hand. It's just a great way to pop. Damascus yeah. steel. Look at the pattern on these motherfuckers. I mean, this one I bought extra. I get scared at night because I read murder reddits right before I go to bed, and then I end up uh, buying knives off Amazon to protect myself. Yeah, yeah. You caught you caught, you caught a lot of shit for uh, carrying a knife because you were afraid of dogs when we were on Matt and Shane's. Um, yeah, when I go for walks with my wife, I carry. A small blade with me just in case I'm attacked by a dog bigger or smaller than this have you been attacked by a dog before I've been scared by a dog but not attacked <laughs> never been bit no so you just are it ready spook me yeah <laughs> are you afraid of dogs just in general not not in general man I think um I just don't like when dogs run up to me we should put you in a bite suit and just let you experiencing that is like exposure therapy yeah I don't know man I, don't know. I mean I don't know about I try it but do you, all right, when was, what's the closest you've come to stabbing a dog while taking a stroll with your wife, if I understand correctly? I've had it out. Uh, you, there, pu you fucking pulled it out? Dan, there's a handful of dogs on our typical walk, which will go to the, they'll run to the end of their property line. Yeah. You know, I read that like 75% of people that get stabbed by dogs, they were the ones that pulled out the knife. <laughs> <laughs> the dog took it in their mouth and used it against them. Every time a guy gets stabbed by a dog, the guy brought the knife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not looking to stab dogs, but I just want to be ready. Where, I don't know, you ready. pulled it out. Where would you... Hypothetically, dog comes at you. Where are you looking to go? I would put it in his belly, and then I'd whisper in his ear. Shh. I think he's still across that range of Rainbow Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> go Dude, upstate to that farm. You I, live near the airport, and that's where my oldest Wigger brother used to abandon his dogs. Really? He would drive down by the airport, let the dog out of the car, and drive away. Like, Yo, peace out. <laughs> Later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yo, hey, my Yo man, cubs. the Rainbow Bridge that way. You yeah. feel me all right? Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Were, you were outside Yo. dog now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, this the walk spot. Get out. <laughs> Push it. <laughs> Animal yeah. cruelty while also taking another <laughs> race's culture. Ha-ha. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yo, I got the lease. <laughs> it's like, no, nah. uh, uh, you a bad girl. Get out of here. Uh, go. Dang. How many dogs did he let out there? Um, I know of one confirmed, another rumored, and then at that point, this guy has just been repeating patterns forever. So, uh, it's probably in the dozens at this point. <laughs> oh man, Dude, the airport is the perfect fucking drop off point for wiggers with. Yeah, you go down by that that stretch where creeps pull over to watch the planes land, mm -hmm. and yeah. then you just let bad pit bulls out. <laughs> <laughs> there's I, there's like a square mile in Philadelphia that's like a Brazilian beach with just untamed pit bulls <laughs> ready to maul you. So maybe you should be carrying a knife. Yeah, they yeah you the... actually might be onto something with this. I feel like I am. Because <laughs> if a pit bull ran up, what are you gonna do? Yeah, a dog without a leash. Yep. There's humans that give me that feeling. Mm -hmm. You ever be I around think it a makes guy? More yeah. sense. You ever yeah. be around a guy though? You ever be around a guy and you're like, "Why do I feel like?" Dude, yeah, dude. <laughs> Who's is this? Whose dog is this? Up until two years ago, I lived in a Hispanic neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, dude, these dogs just fucking running up. Those dudes all got let out at the airport. Dude, when, <laughs> when we were moving Tim out of his house, <laughs> one of the scariest people I've ever seen came to your door to yeah. ask if we needed help, but he was asking in Spanish. Do you remember that? Yeah, and he tried to just walk into the house. Like, yeah, hey, I'm here. I'm here to help pick up stuff that you own and move it. Damn. It's pretty weird. Yeah. That is fucking but weird. But for where we were, it wasn't out of the ordinary. It was just like, no, go away. That's all. Randy, do you have a 
do you have a pull a knife like stance? No, um, I usually have a hoodie on when I walk out. And I have it flipped open if I feel like a dog is going to give me a little bit of trouble. So your hand's on that knife the whole time. Yeah, I got my left hand holding my wife's right hand, and I got my right hand on that thing. Damn. Got that thing on you. <laughs> <laughs> About to fucking neuter a dog for a second time. <laughs> my dog's like a big, fat idiot. If she ran up to you, you'd just be like, oh. I would be okay. Like, I feel like, you know, it's a similar thing. Like, you have a sixth sense for when you feel like this might be trouble or if this dog just wants to smell me. Yeah. But dude, if you if you misinterpret that, <laughs> it's wrong day, dude. Oh, you're you're making a family time. real sad. One one time you're putting that dog down like it's a mystical beast, and then he's got a taste for blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you got to put that mic down. Now he's fucking. Now all he's gonna do is kill dogs. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, they'd have to send me to that rainy bro bridge. Right yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, is this your podcasting partner? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's good. He's why? What happened? He's, he's never just, done that before. He's just going back and forth behind a cage. He mostly just sits in a black chair with a microphone, right? <laughs> Stabbed? No. I, that's Damn. not Mike. Damn, I would wonder what would be your first move, because you would probably try to block the bite you, and then you, come under. You have to offer up a forearm. This yeah. is in the television show Patriot. You give them a forearm, they latch on, and then you just do whatever you want, basically. Mm. Once they get that, they're going to start like... Rawr, rawr, rawr. Yeah. So be ready to absorb that, but I would say if they got balls, reach under for them. You got a knife, just start poking them and see what kills them. The, the last time I came close to being attacked by a dog, it wasn't during a walk. I, it was during a family birthday party. My my sister, who just the worst behaved dogs you could ever have, they were cornering me. I was uh, <laughs> I had my back into the corner. I was just eating olives, and both of these dogs like started creeping toward me. And like velociraptors, <laughs> dude. It, like, oh, yeah, it was just like that. <laughs> they like hunted you as a pack. <laughs> they were coming, and I had to yell for my sister to come in to get them. And she ended up giving them Xanax because that's what she does to calm her dogs down. That's not. That's why. Yeah, damn, dude, those dogs. They're pillheads. Yeah, <laughs> those dogs have lived life. <laughs> those dogs are like it's seven years, but if it's seven years at a click, but they're it feels both like scratching their faces. It, it, yeah, dude, you gotta, <laughs> if you got a dollar or a treat, either one's really good for me. I don't yeah. fucking care. What do you want? Yeah, I'll suck the fucking peanut butter out of your conk. Were they like <laughs> growling at you? Uh, they were creeping. I didn't. I don't remember. A growl, I think you just have they, a fear of dogs. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think you just have a, like a very. Were you already in the corner? or Did they corral you? I was in the corner eating olives, <laughs> like and then they were coming from like, different points. Like he's sheep, yeah, uh, biting his heels <laughs> to get him. They in. were slowly walking me to the top of a grassy hill, <laughs> 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 nipping at my heels. Uh, yeah, because I mean, I got attacked bad when I was six. I got uh, my my face bitten off by my friend's dog. Oh my god, what kind was it? Uh, it was a husky chow mix. Uh, it's a rough dog. And it fucking got me right like this time of year, almost exactly like I would almost say this might be the week anniversary. I was playing with my friend. It was like a snowstorm in Denver. We were playing G.I. Joe's in his house. They brought it was an outside dog. They brought the dog inside and had it leashed to like a, you know, when you go downstairs like uh, like banisters or whatever, mm. it was leashed to one of that. Had a broken paw. And I didn't know that I was six stood up. It was behind me and accidentally stepped on its paw. And that thing fucking woke up and went like up, got my face, tackled me, and then went to Munchtown. No way. It was like, ah, yeah. Then his, his, my friend Justin's dad had to come and grab the dog and like rip it off me and then open the back door and fucking throw it out into the blizzard. It was nuts. I got 46 stitches in my face. Like right here, I have like a line. Oh and then my it was God, like dude. under here. It was fucking nuts. Do you want to keep that knife? Yeah, no, I love dogs, dude. Yeah. I, I try. I I've, given them, I've given them my blood. Man, they understand the sacrifice. That's that's a lot crazier than I was eating olives in the corner and two dogs <laughs> took an aggression, <laughs> aggressive posture against me. Yeah. But that dog, they kept it I was alive. in a proxy war with my sister by her two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> he got his face eaten. They they kept it alive too, and then it bit another kid, and then they put it down. Oh. No. A kid lost his ball in the backyard and they fucking. Oh my god, I thought you meant in the attack. That's what I did. Yeah, <laughs> just ripped it off. Oh fucking bit god. his ball off. <laughs> yeah, like went over the fence and another kid went and they fuck the dog got him in well, the hands. That's his fault. Did they have you talk to the kid to walk him through it? Be like, how you, I show up and I just I <laughs> swivel a chair around. Like, like, hey kid, you want to make some prank calls? <laughs> <sighs> I'm the phantom of the I'm the phantom of the prank phone call. It was bad, dude. It was wild. It took me like, you know, my mom sued the fuck out of them. Uh, did you get any money? Yeah, my Thank mom was God. like, do you have insurance? Nice. And the lady was like, yeah, my mom worked in insurance. She was like, I'm going to 
fuck your insurance company <laughs> up. And, and then we weren't friends after that. <laughs> Justin and I stopped being friends. Because my mom was like, I'm about to get crazy litigious. Well, at least you didn't have to share any of your new toys with them. Right? And I, yeah, man, I should have stolen some. If I knew it was going to happen, I should have pocketed some G.I. Joes that I wanted. <laughs> and then when I wake up in the hospital, I'm like, yes. <laughs> and they'll never come it back. It wasn't a dream. <laughs> yeah. You genius. It was fucking wild. Because I just remember the dog was like, I just remember being like helpless, just being like, yeah, I can't imagine being being at the whims of the power of a husky. Yeah, husky chow, dude. And that when I told people that, they're like, chows can be quite aggressive. And you're like, mm-hmm. yeah, I fucking know. Yeah, they love eating kids, man. Love it. Right. Love snacking on a kid. You got to experience what it was like to be a PlayStation controller in my house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, it was fucking wild because the doctor, like, there's a scar right next to my eye, and the doctor was like, if the dog would have been like one more inch over, you would have lost that eye. Oh, I love that kind of thing. And he's like, but telling a six-year-old that, you're like, "Mm, what are you doing, dude? (laughs) Kid, do you like pirates? I'm not not ready to be this cool. He's like, oh, you almost lost an eye. And you're like, I still have to get 46 (laughs) stitches on my face. And they did like Novocaine. Uh, That was the thing that I remember like hating was they gave me Novocaine shots. But it was like just a fucking needle just like going into my face. Yeah. Fucking brutal. I got hit in the head with a cymbal, a hi-hat cymbal when I was a kid. I was fucking around on a drum set at my dad's work where they had it. And it fell over and hit me in the face. And the worst part, the only part that I actually remember was them sticking the Novocaine needle in. McCusker said I got hit with Kung Lao's hat. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, dude, that Novocaine going in, you're like, ah, what the fuck? Yeah, no, just give me some of the bite and pour some fucking whiskey on it. Yeah, dude, it's Colorado. Let's do some fucking settler shit. Yeah. (laughs) Put a tourniquet around my neck. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't bleed out. Was there any part of you that thought you would be fucked up forever? My mom was real worried about that. Because they called my mom and my mom was like, we were around, we lived around the corner. So my mom was there like quick. And I remember they like lifted me up and I felt like the warmth of blood coming down. And I went, do I need stitches? And it made one of them laugh. One of them was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my mom came in and was like, fuck. And she worked in like um, doctor malpractice insurance. Mm-hmm. That was like where she worked for an insurance company. And so she like knew doctors and she was like, can we get like a good doctor? And they got like a legit plastic surgeon oh, nice. to come down. Yeah, so, I did, so I didn't look like fucking jigsaw. Mm-hmm. He like, but did a good job. There's like, yeah, you I, would, I got yeah, a couple yeah. dents, and then under here on the cheek, I have a scar, and then next to my eye. But it was like fucking wild. How long was he munching for? Oh, I mean, it was like grab my face, like a fucking shake, stop, and then got me again, and then fucking, I just felt him get ripped off. Damn. Oh the God. worst part was uh in Colorado, the heating grates like the for heat are on the ground, and he tackled me near one, and fucking when he whipped my face like that, my jaw hit one of the heating grate, so I like had a bruised jaw. Oh god! So it fucked that dog. Fucked Smokey. That dog fucked my shit. They should have let you kill him. I would have loved to. Yeah, <laughs> you're lucky. I would have loved to fucking put a knife in it and been like, <laughs> "That was for Christmas <laughs> of 1990." <laughs> you fucking piece of shit. Because I remember flying to, my dad lived in San Francisco, and I, I spent Christmas with him that year, and I like flew to San Francisco, and I got off the plane to watch on my dad's face, but like, oh, because I, I thought it'd be funny if I Goo. wore like the Groucho Marx glasses <laughs> when I was six. I was like, it'd be funny if I got off the plane with Groucho Marx glasses, mm-hmm. and, I did, and I remember my dad be like, whoa, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. You're like, and he's such a piece of shit, he's probably like, do I get any of that money? <laughs> My mom was like, no, you left the family. He's like, ah, shit. God damn it. Ah, we were supposed to split that ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, we were supposed to split that I this, this was from uh, my, my left eye is fucked up forever because uh, I slipped on ice uh, in high school. I told the story before, but I was, it was, everything was frozen. It was actually probably this week coming up. It's, it's fucking bad like, the, week for face. From the bus to uh, my school was like a, a five minute walk. And uh, in front of this car dealership, there was a frozen puddle. And it was so long that me and my buddy Vince were just seeing how far we could run and slide across it. Damn. Now, we, I couldn't afford, like, gloves and, like, proper winter gear. So I'm already, like, experiencing hypothermia. And I put my hands in my pockets. And I get as much speed as possible. And I do it. And I try to add a twist. And both of my feet come out. And I go face first onto the ground. <sighs> and my skull explodes. And Did it knock you out? I don't think so. I remember I remember seeing I remember no, cuz I remember looking down and seeing the first drops of blood pour and like hit the ice. Yeah. And they I got another I was going, "Do I need stitches?" and it was like a, <laughs> I was in the school nurse's office and they were just like 
trembling. They had no idea. It turned out I. <laughs> you fucked up a school nurse. You go to sleep. She's throwing up. Oh, fuck, I'm not ready for this. Kind of... Sawdust on your face. <laughs> there was a 7 Eleven across the street. I went in to get napkins. And they were like, oh, no. And yeah. I, get out of here. You are bleeding. Come on, buddy. No. Oh, I'm, I'm blood <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> what are you doing? You're getting blood and bad luck everywhere, man. Uh, yeah, you are bleeding. It's a bad holiday <laughs> for you bleed. to bleed. Man, and please like, don't bleed in my <laughs> store, man. You're just holding it. Like, I can't it. I'm getting really cold and sleepy. <laughs> and uh, so the we, we were at the ER, and I think the doctor found out, like, as he was putting the stitches in that we didn't have insurance, and he just, like, phoned in the last <laughs> So I just got oh, fucked up forever. I wish I would have got a plastic surgeon. Oh, dude, my mom was like, get me the name God of somebody. It. But, dude, also, yours is, like, fast and in the ER. You know what I mean? True. Like, the ER, you coming in and be like, I fell. And as a teenager, I think they're like... I was a child, so they're like, this baby. Yeah. You were like, like you fuck, what were you doing, you idiot? Yeah, this guy's already on a bad path. Yeah. <laughs> You're like already cold. You're like, I didn't yeah. wear a proper jacket. I, yeah. He could have fucked me up a little bit worse, made me a villain. That would have been nice. I think doctors should do that more. Start marking kids. That's where we should find out. You'd be a good two-faced. Oh. Can you imagine if you had like a fucking... Like a sick, like your eye was all fucked up, and then you look straight down the middle of your eye, and then you look to your right, and I just got fucking stitch (laughs) scars. Where I'm like, (laughs) Uh, I was eating olives. (laughs) (laughs) Do our bidding, bro. You're our our henchman now. We've walked. We've walked the path. Dude, I hope for your sake. I honestly, I hope you never stab a dog. I do too, man. It's gonna be fucked up either way. You know how like good cops say it's like, yeah, I've in 21 years of service, I've never had to discharge my fire. Yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah, but that day you do. (laughs) That fucking day you do. I'm gonna become Bark Furman. Oh my god. (laughs) It was a black dog. He ran at me. You guys all saw that. He was minding his business. Oh no. That was bad. Yeah, I hope it never gets to that point, man. Yeah, hope it never gets that violent. Yeah. I got over my fear of dogs. I forget how, but when I was uh, in second grade, my friend had like a husky German Shepherd mix and it bit my butt and it put two circle holes. You in had a butt. Sandusky. He was like, mm, let me get a kiss, <laughs> little taste of that. Mm. He said, let me get this juicy little <laughs> boy. Oh, he's mm. like, oh, look at all and this. And I fat know, dude, I know when he sank his teeth and he was like, Damn. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I gotta check. I haven't had a good look at my butt in a while, but I had two perfect little circle scars. Did you bleed? Me. Yeah. Damn. So he got you, and then you like went he, into his through bathroom. the pants. <laughs> through the pants, he he punctured my butt cheeks with his teeth. Oh, dude. Were they were they bad dogs, or were they just like? Yeah, this is white trash. Mm. Like, dude, when white trash yells at their dogs, dude, like, the whole house smelled like piss, and then that powder that you dump on your carpet and then vacuum to get the piss smell out, and it doesn't. So you know, you just smell like carpet powder and piss. Yeah, my buddy Joey had this aggressive dog named Louie, oh. and you would just go over to his house and you'd just be like, no, 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 just the whole time you were there, nonstop, just be like, no, 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 no. and then one of him or his brothers or his dad would go, Louie, shut the fuck up, and you're like, this, you understand, this is why he's like, that. he's just like, bah, 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 just fucking yeah. yelling, and you're like, trying to have a conversation about school with his dad, and you're like, Bro. yeah, it's pretty good. Well, dude, white trash is still in the stone age as far as dog <laughs> yeah. goes. They haven't figured out shit yet. Yeah. He's like, I punch him in the head when he's really bad, and if he's far away, I yell. I'll body slam him into the backyard <laughs> if he does what I don't want him to do. Mm-hmm. The worst people on my street recently got a dog, and I hear it out all times of night. Yeah. They are, they shouldn't have kids, and they shouldn't have dogs, and they got a both. What are their kids like? Babies now. But, uh, so a problem in the future. What do you mean babies now? Were they older before? <laughs> Benjamin, <laughs> they got Benjamin Button kids, dude. Yeah. Well, he shrunk them by accident. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they put them in front of a white trash Zoltar machine. He's a, say, yeah, he's a scientist. He created a laser. Yeah, we wish he was little again. Yeah. <laughs> but they, you'd know that they're going to be... Well, well dude, uh, just this past summer, the two chicks with babies, they got arrested for just screaming in the street. Sick. That's a crime? Well... It wasn't. They were told to go back inside, and they came back out. When the cops came back, they started fighting with the cops. No, they got grounded by the cops. Yeah. yeah. Cops were like, D- I, got I don't want to ground you. <laughs> were they yelling at each other or someone else? One was on the phone, and then they both ended up out in the street. The other one was hype manning her? Yeah. yeah. I think they just got a hold of something bad that night. Really? Yeah. Because I had never uh, seen that from them before. And they had babies? Yeah. Well, you should kill them. Done. <laughs> just kill them, dude. Done. I, Bro, society's crime. I'm saying in six months, it's not going to be legal to kill them, but no one's going to really have time to give a shit. 
People are gonna go like this. Oh yeah, that was kind of fucked up. Yeah, that's and then move on. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, they, we're at we're at yeah. a billion. And they dude. open a curtain and there's just an open fire in the street outside of their house. And you're like, well, I guess I guess I wish he didn't we're, kill them. Th- you're right. We're at eight billion. Time to start pruning. <laughs> yeah, I might do it with a dog knife. Yeah, dude. Also, just dude, funny these to bad know if, bitches would kill you. Yeah. If you came in and just fucking lumped up, <laughs> then you go, I pulled my dog knife on one of them. <laughs> Somebody get this fat bitch off of me. <laughs> I pulled on my dog knife and, and she she got in. <laughs> and she fucking got in the inside. And she put her scrunchie around my neck. And as I was losing consciousness, her fat bitch roommate started biting my face. I, just, I started getting kicked by a sketcher. And I fucking. And then Cheyenne, I went, down. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm being fish hooked by her toddler. Oh, my, oh, dude, just getting fucking eaten by a swarm of white trash ladies. You got kid footprints all over your face in the in the holding tank. My question is: Do you ever get nervous? Do you go on walks it when it's like night? Yeah. Dude, what if someone just you think it's a dog and it's just like a you know dog shaped man, <laughs> just a hairy man. Yeah, this guy, that's hilarious, dude. Brendan Price wrote, Randy's going to accidentally stab a kid in the glory. <laughs> that's 100% what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, dude, there should be monitoring, like, uh, people want stricter gun laws. I think there should be stricter dog laws. Oh, uh, 100%. You should be like, dude, I, you shouldn't. You were in the street on some shit. Mm-hmm. You can't have a dog. Mm-hmm. What kind of dogs do they have? They have a pit bull. Mm, which yeah. that's crazy that's like the number one breed of just like the most clueless fat dipshit in the world yeah. on top of it being the worst dog ever it's like it was like the retarded kid in class that would like draw muscle men <laughs> and he's like that's i mean that's that was me but yeah. also like <laughs> go on but then you like but then when you like it's like someone who's like if i were to draw a dog he would have muscles it's you're a like, creative you know, wrestler for dog people yeah you're like you don't need a dog with muscles do you, you need have a any fat, with... nice dog do you have any that already have tribal tattoos? <laughs> <laughs> or am I going to have to take uh, this little guy? Instead of barking, can you yell the N-word? <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if you could fucking do that. <laughs> yeah, dude, you shouldn't be able to fucking just get a muscly, mean dog. <laughs> like, those women, you know what I mean? Like, that's it's going to be bad for your kids. It's going to be bad for, for everybody, you. yeah. Everybody. There's a 100% chance this dog gets loose at some point. But... I know a certain man with a dog knife <laughs> that might be able to clean up those. Dude, they're going to give me the signal like the fucking bat signal. <laughs> You're needed. <laughs> we need you to kill some of these fucking Mexican ladies' dogs. It's fucking Bruce Painkiller. <laughs> I, I'm here to kill the dogs. I was born near the airport. You're a bad boy. <laughs> Maybe that's what you do. Maybe what you do is you go get some of those those airport dogs bring them into your neighborhood you know like when they reintroduced Some of those invasive yeah. pit bulls yeah. remember when they remember they when they reintroduced wolves to yellowstone that was what you need to do you need to introduce airport dogs into your neighborhood to keep everything all right we're like i don't know dude i ain't going outside and then airport. when their job is done you bring in a bunch of white girls to adopt all the yeah. airport pit bulls yeah white girls with nose piercings problem because then solved. they'll take care of them they'll put them in sweaters and shit mm-hmm. all right i'm gonna put this in action now the only barrier between the airport and my house is i-95 how do I get the dogs across 95? How am I going to lure them? That's oh their, God. that is Put their... peanut butter in the center lane. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You'd be cleaning up airport dogs. Especially if you did it at night where it's all truckers. Just 18 wheelers. Just... They wouldn't even notice. Oh my God, dude. Running over those dogs like that little kid in Pet Cemetery. Just trucking kids. That's a brilliant thing. That's just, just all going to be ghost dogs all around yeah. the airport. The old ghost dog highway. <laughs> There's a rumor that a man put a jar of Skippy in the middle lane. <laughs> <coughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so you start practicing on them, like when uh, Batman was at ninja training or whatever yeah. in Batman yeah. Begins. Okay. And then, uh, I don't know, I guess one of them is actually your nemesis forever, and I've, I've lost the thread. I just stab dogs. I, I don't know. <laughs> Please just stab dogs. But I'm saying, what do you think... Who do you think is going to be a bigger problem first, the dogs or the kids? Oh... All right, the dog short term, the kids long term. Yeah, kids, that's the long play. They're going to be a problem when your bones start hurting more. Mm-hmm. Right now is like you're in fighting shape. That's, dogs. That's terrible though. Watching, watching, because I, I, my neighborhood before it was Hispanic was white trash, so I got to watch 
white trash kids grow up with white trash dogs and it's like an amplification it's an echo chamber of, yeah. of just fucking stepdad screams <laughs> those dogs don't die Never, dude. Old they'll, age. they'll have like big, weird brown shit growing off of them, all their joints. Dude, my grandma's dog, buddy, got to a point where you're like, "This is impressive that you're still yeah. alive." Mm-hmm. It's a pr- he would he would bump up. I love dogs, and he would bump up against me and I'd be like, "Ew!" <laughs> he's so old. You'd be like, "Yeah," and you're like, "Damn, dude, you keep going forever." My sister has a big, sick dog right now. I, mean, I don't even know that he's actually sick. I just think he's decomposing in real time. So it was like, "How old is he?" Uh, like. Uh, high single digits mastiff though oh yeah and bigger just, the dog the less time he's got like a limp that he'll like fake sometimes watching him like get up is it's he like, trying to get pills <laughs> yeah I, well, they keep taking him to the vet and it's like 700 dollars every time but like watching him even get up it's like <laughs> <laughs> and uh was he ever aggressive no, never. Okay. Not one. Mastiffs are fucking. They don't have time for it. Mastiffs do not have time to be aggressive. They'll maybe like maybe they'll do like a head turn and a, oh, and then it's just like, oh my. Yeah, God. they all have the demeanor of John Candy. Mm. Yeah, it's like, hey, I'm just a big guy. <laughs> yeah. Just here to love you. But they're the they get the most mistreatment. I told I told my sister she she's almost like a a black mom in a white neighborhood with her dogs, where it's just like, you got to be twice the good boy that other dogs got to be. <laughs> they're not gonna treat you right. They're, they're not gonna, gonna understand. She's gonna, gonna be, give you a chance. <laughs> yeah. Is she gonna be crying in the street when he gets hit by a car? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you took my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you take fudge? Oh, you <laughs> piece of shit. Whoa, see, oh man, Danny just gave us a high sign. It's time to, all right, let's take a quick break and hop over to the Patreon. Dan, if you got time to stick around with us a little bit more, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, I can hold a knife for a little yes. bit longer. Yeah, and you can bail at any time if you have a hard out. Well, uh, dang. Okay, I feel like we we're just getting started. My bad. All right, Danny, thanks for the high sign. Um, uh, on perks.com. Jesus, dude, yeah, the talk book's about out, your fucking dude. book. Incredible, dude. man. Thank you to everybody who's ordered. And for those of you that haven't yet, if you go to onperks.com, you can get a copy of my new book, On Perks, which is thoroughly retarded. I'm putting the the audiobook now, too, and the audiobook has taken on a life of its own. I promise you, if you like anything I do, you're going to love On Perks. Dude, I, dude, congratulations, man. Thank you, Dan. It's, it's so fucking awesome. I'm so It's happy. like great to watch it happen in real time, mm-hmm. where it's just like these hilarious posts, and you're like, yeah, do a book, and you're like, what a fucking genius idea. Oh, dude, I, yeah. I appreciate that so much. Yeah, and now it's out. It's like a real fucking thing. Fuck yeah. Brother, one of my goals, my main goal was to sell 5,000 copies and to get back the car that I had repossessed. I had a Chrysler 300, the perfect okay. deal. <laughs> and my goal is, once I hit 5,000 copies, I'm going to treat myself to a perk mobile. Yesterday, I surpassed the 2,000 copy mark, so I'm 40% of the way All right, there. we're on the way, dude. I'm going back on the need. Pay. You guys need to make one of those thermometers in here. Where it, like, goes <laughs> up, and then at the top is the, the perk. The school candy out. sale thermometer. Yeah. Are we getting yeah. new yeah. uniforms? And then have it bust through yeah. and be like, perk mobile. <laughs> but I have a, a favor to ask you guys. If I should happen to get locked up for dog murder, yeah, will you guys... Help carry on my mission. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna 5, do. Five thousand copies. I'm gonna go get you one of those dark water lawyers. I'm gonna get you out. <gasps> one of those molestation boys. Boys who dance with the devil. And I'm gonna get you sprung from that fucking jail. Yeah. Wow. That's all I want, dude. That's fucking awesome, man. On Perks.com. Yeah. Yeah, you are the fucking man. Yeah, you guys rule. Before we go, I just want to say it just means a lot to both of us that you're. You're even fucking interacting with us. We both hold you in such high regard, Ah, and you've been nothing but kind and generous to us, and it Mm -hmm. just means a lot. Yeah, you guys fucking rule, and I love, like, um, I always loved, like, the Philly crew, Delco proper. It's like, you know, and then now with, like, Shane and McKeever and all you guys, it's just fucking great. I love you guys, and you guys are all, like, super fucking funny, and, uh, yeah, this was... This was more an honor for me to come and hang out. Oh, you know I mean? oh no, that, that means too much. And you guys got the best logo in the game. That was simply oh, thank you. The Sucking suck. your own bird <laughs> the as the M. Come on, dude. It's <laughs> yes. not a better logo. Took in a the lot game. of effort. <laughs> yeah, we got there, baby. I, I was saying this because the Warmwood Boys came with Shane to uh, Helium oh, last night, the and I was saying they have the best merch with the Val Kilmer the Val shirt. Val Kilmer shirt, yeah. The that's like shirt. I think that's the best Top T-shirt in the game, and you guys have the best logo. Wow. Respect, respect, respect is due. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Wow. All right, take us over there, Danny. See you on the Patreon. Dude, that was so much fun. That was a tough pace, man. Jesus Christ. That was fun, dude.